One of the questions that I get asked a lot is, what is the difference between metformin and inositol? And can you take them together for PCOS? So in this video, we're going to have a side-by-side -side comparison of metformin versus inositol in PCOS. I am Taryn. I'm the founder of PCOS Diet Support, and I talk a lot about PCOS. So if that's something that you're interested in, then I really want to encourage you to like this video, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell, do all the things, do all the things to make sure that you don't miss any videos that come out from this channel. Now, if you've had PCOS for a little while, your doctor may well have prescribed something called metformin. The other words or the other names of metformin, one of them is glucophage. Basically, it's an insulin sensitizer. It's very often prescribed for type 2 diabetics. But it is also shown to be pretty effective in managing PCOS and improving some of the symptoms of PCOS. On the other hand, we have inositol, which I speak about at length. You can watch this video over here for the benefits of inositol and PCOS. We will talk a little bit more about the benefits. But one of the questions that I get asked all the time is, can you take them together? Before I can answer that question, we need to understand how inositol works. I mean, how metformin works. So I'm not going to um, get too scientific, but uh, metformin works in one of three ways. Firstly, it's um, stops the liver from producing glucose. Okay, so it's helping to manage blood glucose levels. Secondly, it helps to make your body more sensitive to the insulin that is being produced. And thirdly, it helps the digestive system to not absorb and digest as many carbohydrates. So those are the three ways that metformin work. So how does that compare to inositol? Well, inositol works by it, once the um, insulin attaches to the cell wall, there is a whole chemical chain reaction that happens within the cell. And inositol helps to make that chemical reaction or that chain reaction more effective. So they work in two very different ways, but you can still get really good benefits from both of them. So let's have a look at the side-by-side -side comparison of the benefits of metformin and inositol. So you probably can't see this. Um, I'm going to make this a little bit bigger and I'm going to cover my face, but don't fear, I will come back. Okay, so if we are looking at metformin, metformin helps to lower, uh, to lower insulin, okay? And inositol does the same thing. It also helps to lower insulin. Metformin helps to regulate the menstrual cycle. That means you are more likely to have a period more regularly if you take metformin. But so does inositol. Metformin has been shown to lower testosterone. So if you are struggling with some of the symptoms of high testosterone levels, things like um, hair where you don't want it, alopecia, so that's male pattern baldness, um, acne, metformin can help to address those things. And so can inositol. But inositol also works to improve egg quality. So if you're trying to conceive, inositol can be really helpful. It helps to decrease carb cravings. And I hear this all the time from women. They say to me that as soon as they start taking inositol, their carb cravings improve significantly. It helps to manage inflammation. Women with PCOS have chronic low-grade inflammation all the time. So it can help to manage that. It also helps to improve anxiety, something that is often very high in women with PCOS. And it helps to improve acne. So that is huge. If you look at that, I'm going to make this smaller. You are getting so many benefits from taking inositol that you are not necessarily going to get when you take metformin. So if your doctor has prescribed metformin, it might be helpful to have a conversation with them and find out the reasoning. If you are fully type 2 diabetic or you are pre-diabetic, then maybe taking something like metformin, there are, there are um, stronger reasons to take metformin if you are struggling with, um, with type 2 diabetes or pre-diabetes. Pre if, however, it's to just improve your general overall PCOS symptoms, then inositol may well be more um, advantageous in this situation. Let's also, we, what we haven't spoken about is we haven't spoken about side effects. Now, I have never taken metformin myself, but I have heard from so many women that it causes a lot of gastrointestinal distress, okay? So kind of you, you need to go to the bathroom fairly frequently. If you eat too much fatty food, it can again cause some gastrointestinal issues and it can be fairly um, unpleasant. The other thing that we need to say about metformin is that metformin 
does impact on vitamin B12 levels. So taking metformin for a really long period of time can lower or cause a vitamin B12 deficiency, which has some huge impacts. So if you have been taking metformin for a number of years, then I really want to encourage you to either review it or make sure that you have your vitamin B12 levels checked so that you're not putting yourself at risk. So those are some of the considerations when it comes to the side effects of metformin. However, when it comes to inositol, the side effects are far fewer. It's a very um, easy supplement to take. You take it in the morning and the evening. You can take it in your water. Um, it tastes very mildly like sugar water. Very seldom. Um, every now and then, women have come to me saying they struggle possibly with headaches with um, inositol or there may be some kind of gastrointestinal issues. There are very few and far between that I hear these reports. If you are struggling with any of the side effects, you can halve the dose and take two grams in the morning or possibly miss the evening dose. That can help to um, improve your tolerance to inositol. It is very safe to take. You can take inositol throughout pregnancy. You can take it whilst breastfeeding. It is generally considered a very safe supplement. So when comparing the side effects, um, inositol is probably going to be easier to take from a side effects point of view. So then the last question that we need to answer that I keep referring to is, can you take metformin and inositol together? So there is, um, there is not a significant amount of research on the com combination of metformin and inositol together. I have often recommended that if you do take the two together, because they can both, um, both of them can make you more sensitive to insulin, there is a risk that you will have struggle with bouts of hypoglycemia, which is when your sugar levels go too low. Um, what I would do is I would start at half the dose of inositol, see how you tolerate it. If you're tolerating it well, then you can increase the dose, the full dose alongside metformin. Also, because um, metformin and inositol work in completely different ways, um, they are generally considered safe to take together. So I hope that answers that question and clarifies that for you, that generally speaking, it is safe to take together. If you have any questions or concerns at all about taking the combination of the two, please do go and speak to your doctor about it. I will also say that having watched this video, you may feel like maybe you need to go off metformin altogether and only take an acetol. Again, I want to encourage you, please speak to your doctor before you just stop taking metformin. Please make sure that you are doing this in conjunction with your doctors, that you are doing it safely. Thank you so much for joining me on this video. If you have any questions at all about metformin, about inositol, about a combination of the two, please feel free to drop me a comment. I'm really happy to answer any questions you might have. And I will see you on the next video.